Hello, welcome to Game On, the gaming show. Oh, you've got that on as well. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's, that's awkward. We should definitely start calling each other up before yeah. the show because that, that's going to happen should again. Should I change? Should you? Uh, should we... Let's both change because yeah, this I'm, is. And frankly, I'm embarrassed. It's though. not working. Coming up this week Shouty Geeks. Screamy sirens. And some tennis screenshots. Tennis screenshots? We can do better than that. That sounds rubbish. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence. Nice shirt, by the way. Thanks. Yours is just horrible. Halo Reach doesn't launch till Tuesday, but this week London played host to a very special event, the Halo, Halo Reach, Reach launch. Premiere. It's a premiere. It was a premiere. Really? Said premiere. Well, it wasn't in Leicester Square, so I'm not going to say premiere. Well, did it have a coloured carpet? Yes, it were was there blue. celebrities involved? There were some celebrities walking yes. along the coloured carpet. There were. Yes. Was there a big launch event type screening deal game competition? Well, there may have been some celebrities taking on some gamers in a you know a kind of three round death match, but uh, nothing big. Equals premiere. So yes, the blue carpet premiere was a fairly star-studded event with a team of five celebs led by the best Halo player in the country taking on six other Halo heads in a three-round battle. Needless to say, it didn't end well for the celebrities. Indeed not, they got schooled, but still we got time with the team beforehand to try and get inside their heads and gauge their mood. Rio Ferdinand, England footballer, was pretty positive. Hopefully we don't get uh, um, shown up. Uh, we come here to try and uh, win the game and Fingers crossed we'll do that. Embarrassingly bad prediction there. Bad, but not as embarrassing as when he proved to the crew next to us he thinks Halo's a company. Yeah, fair bit. Uh, Halo give me a game, so I've got a little bit of time alone by myself playing. Just weird. Yeah, Jamila Jamil was a little more realistic about the possible outcome, I thought. Um, I'm be about to have my ass handed to me by a bunch of teenage boys. I imagine they'd love to handle her ass. Surely we're above that, Johnny. To be fair, she was playing with a severe handicap, namely a broken arm. Um, I, I, felt, I tripped over and I fell. I was painting with Ollie Murs and uh, for Orange Rock Core and um, I slipped rather spectacularly, uh, knocked out my front teeth, got a concussion, broke my elbow, broke four ribs, but I'm still here. Oh, congratulations. It's all good. I had to use eyelash glue to stick my teeth back in and keep filming. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a high five? Yeah. A little high five? Fine. Yeah, definitely. Ow, just break my other arm. Ah, and all that for Ollie Murphy. I know, tragic. Still, in case you're having a hard time imagining the accident, we put together this artist's impression. Uncanny. Tell me about it. Moving on, anyway, we then spoke to Mr. Hudson, fat tune maker and auto tune extraordinaire. To be honest, he almost sounded like he wanted to lose. I'm probably going to let the side down, but I'm going to I'm going to compete with spirit and flair, and I'm going to be conspicuously uh, ineffective. Conspicuously ineffective. Yeah, he was. He also clearly didn't have his head in the game, as he was more intent on distracting rugby player Ben Cohen when we asked how he was feeling. Yeah. I suppose when you're probably going to get humiliated in some way. Well, I'm pretty confident, pretty confident I might do OK, but uh, yeah, a bit, a bit nervous. Shocking. I know. Still, in addition to team leader Luke, the celebs did have one ace in the hole. <laughs> no, really. Yeah, Jason Bradbury, gadget man and self-confessed Halo head, was on board to bolster the team and help them shoot their way to victory. Or rather stop the competition from being a total washout. Yeah, the three rounds didn't go well. The first Slayer round went 51-15 to the nerds and the next fell 64-10. Playing purely for pride in the third round, King of the Hill, the celebrity so-called gamers truly availed themselves. And lost 94-27. Stunning. Still, even though the Halo heads absolutely trounced their opponents, they did so in good humour, even giving the winning trophy to the celeb team captain. No, oh, that's far too sportsmanlike. He would not survive in the field of intergalactic warfare. No, I worry for him. The only time a Spartan gives something shiny and metal to someone else is when it's guaranteed to blow them sky high. Told you. Anyway, that was the Halo re. Say it. Premier. Premier, yeah, the game is of course out on Tuesday. We'll be bringing you our review of the title as soon as our battle rifle cools off. Now I feel the need, the need for therapy. No, the need for a bath. No, the need for drastic cosmetic surgery. No, but it's nice to know what you think of me. The need for speed. 
It's fast, it's furious, it's got nothing to do with the Fast and the Furious. No, totally different series. This is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. The EA title was officially announced back in June, currently scheduled for a November release. Hot Pursuit takes the series back to its frantic, fuzz-dodging roots as gamers engage in exhilarating street races, trying to simultaneously stuff their opponents and avoid the long arm of the law. We got hands-on with the game just this week, and what we saw was really impressive. The handling will be familiar to anyone that's played the Burnout series, but it's knocked up a couple of notches. It strikes a fantastic balance between silly amounts of speed and totally deranged drift action. The responsive braking system allows you to put the car sideways at the drop of a hat, sending you screaming round corners before nitrous boosting off into the sunset, or more often than not, in my case, straight into the central reservation. Yeah, well, we didn't see it during our hands-on. The game also boasts some impressive on- and offline support. The real feather in its cap is the interactive system that constantly updates you on how you and your friends are doing. It allows you to take them on without arranging to meet up online, as you set challenges for each other and try to get the best time. So Need for Speed Hot Pursuit looks ready to not only start a series of online feuds between former friends, it's also primed to push racing titles well into the next gear. Yeah, what gear is that now? All, all the titles seem to push it into the next gear. We must be on gear like 79 by mm, now. Depends if you count Mario Kart. I do. 100 and, 112. Mm, Sega All-Stars Racing? Yep, 125. Diddy so. Kong Racing? Yep, 138. Gran Turismo? So quick maths, 163. And counting. There's a big drive at the moment towards motion-based gaming. Nintendo got the ball rolling in 2006 with the Wii, and ball. its competitors are now racing to be the next big thing in mindless flailing. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Microsoft's Kinect recently. Mostly because the people in their trailers are easier to mock than anything we've ever seen. But what about PlayStation's dodgy-looking wonder stick, Move? We managed to wrap our hands around it this week, and also used it to play Virtua Tennis 4. Poor. In 3D, no less. Now, for 3D cynics like us, not only were the pop-out visuals really impressive, impressive, if a little disorientating at times, but the Move controller itself far exceeded our every expectation. Yeah, while the Wii certainly paved the way for movement-based gaming, it also limited our imaginations to a certain extent, getting us used to a very specific approach to arm waggling. By contrast then, the move does things we simply didn't expect it to. If you're waiting to receive a serve, for instance, you can turn the controller in your hands and it'll turn the racket on screen accordingly. Whereas with the Wii you can get by making snide little movements with your wrist, the camera add-on to the move forces you to properly swing the controller as you would a racket. It may sound taxing, but it also rewards the player for making the effort with some alarmingly precise ball placement, making it, and I'm going out on a limb here, the most precise tennis game we've ever played. It's a pretty big call if you ask me. I think it's high time Move got its own gauge. I'll go get it. Good idea. Say hello then to the Move on Onomometer. That's a good name. Slightly better than the Connectomometer Transmogrifier. The Connectometer Transmogrifier. Correct, yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello, by the way. Well, let's hello. see. I mean, based on Virtual Tennis yeah, where 4, are we? Uh, I yeah. say excitement is actually massively, it's well up there. I Huge. Mean, we're a Zomg with Connect right yeah. now. I'm I'm moving and we push it to squee. Really? Because I think the excitement for me is the same as Connect. Okay, we'll keep it at Zong. Okay, somewhere teetering between the two at teetering. least. We do love a good teeter. Yeah. Satisfaction, Satisfaction guaranteed. It's way higher. It's way up by yeah, even teetering on Zong. Yeah, yeah, Zong. Yeah. Kind of Yong. <laughs> Yong! Now that's clever, isn't it? Almost it from us this week at Game On. Just time to tell you Duke Nukem Forever is soon to be released. Yeah, good one. No, no, I'm serious. No, it's not even April 1st. I'm not falling for it. I haven't trusted you since you did that thing with my Xbox and the hummus. It was Satsiki. It's a totally different dip. And I'm telling the truth. Duke Nukem Forever is going to be released. I feel a bit faint. Yep, this is the only image released so far since the announcement, but it is official. 2K Games and Gearbox Software have reached into the black gaming abyss and pulled out Duke Nukem sunglasses and all into the here and now. The excruciating wait will be over in 2011. We're hoping to see more on the game very soon. In the meantime, we'll have to make do with staring at this severed pig's head. Don't knock it. Some of the best nights of my youth were spent staring at a severed pig's head. That says that's... quite a lot about you as a person, really, really? doesn't it? Yeah. That's... Anyway, that's it from us for this week. We're off to challenge Rio Ferdinand to a game of tiddlywinks to see if he's any less useless at that. More gaming gauntlets next week. And some tennis screenshots. Tennis screenshots. That sounds rubbish. Yes, thanks for the voice of confidence. Nice shirt, too. There, yours is rubbish. <laughs>
Nothing big. There you go. Those three things equal premiere. <laughs> can we can't keep in three things, things, can we? <laughs> we'll be bringing you our review of the title as soon as our battle rifle cools off. Battle rifle cools off. Was that a bit? No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Base. Base. How low can you go? We got hands on with the game just this week, and what we saw was very impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird. Really? I thought it was fine. No, it was wrong. So, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. <laughs> Too much fist pumping, not enough pedal working. So, Need for Speed Hot... <laughs> we should get one that works on <laughs> Sorry. It's also primed to push racing titles well into the next gear. Gear, gear, well into the next gear. But what gear is that now? I've just made too many jokes and it doesn't, it doesn't work. Gear, gear. Man walks into a bar. <laughs> Out. Right. What gear is that? We managed to wrap our hands around it this week and also used it to play Virtua Tennis 4. <sighs> Weak. In 3D, no less. <laughs> in 3D, no less. Uh, no less in 3D. 3D, no less is my favourite cafe in, in all of London. 3D, no less. Say hello to the them, the web, the web, the Say hello then to the move on a mon a mon a mini Hello. Hi. Move on a mon a mon a mon Move on a mon a mon Move on a mini man a mon I think you should do that. Say hello to the move on a mini man a mon a mon I can't do that. I can't do it. I'll try it. I'll do it my way. Mon a mini man a mon a mini man If I do it in the way I can say it, then I'll be able to say it. Okay, try and say it. If I say it in a way that I can't say it, by definition, I won't say it. Say hello then. Hang on. Whoop. Sorry. Almost it from us this week at Game On. Just time to tell you Duke Nukem Forever's coming out soon. Yeah, good one. No, I'm serious. No, it's not even April 1st. I'm not falling for it. I haven't trusted you since you did that thing with my Xbox and the hummus. <laughs> that was funny. Shouldn't have laughed. 